right, hi everyone, good morning. My name is Mike Victor and I'm a representative of Abraham's Consulting and we do business for federal organizations, uh, agencies and departments. And at this team exchange meeting, we will be discussing Nintex regarding process management, the key to operations excellence. So that's our TEMS title. So our host right now, we have here Matt Beers. He's a process management professional with a passion for uncovering and simplifying business processes. Based out of Atlanta, he's from Atlanta, Georgia. He works with Nintex clients in North America and helps them generate more customer value through documenting, managing, and improving their business processes by utilizing Nintex roadmap. All right, so Matt, I'm giving you the floor for the presentation. All right, great, I uh, appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, and as was mentioned, uh, my name's Matt Spears. I'm a consultant here at Nintex and uh, our topic for today is process management, the key to uh, operational excellence. And I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the term operational excellence. It's uh, a term that uh, seems to be all over uh, the business world these days. Maybe even it's a term you've used in your own organization. Um, in fact, when I'm working with clients, it's quite common for me to hear that uh, they have goals of operational excellence. Uh, but what I often see is that those desires for operational excellence sometimes have little to offer in the way of substantive change. And in this session, what I'd like to do is introduce you to some practical steps that your organization can take towards operational excellence. But as we begin, I want to start by first defining that term, giving a definition to the term operational excellence. And quite simply, operational excellence can be defined as the execution of business strategy more consistently and reliably than the competition. And how do you do that? How can you execute your business strategy better than your competition? Well, you want to maximize the value that you produce while at the same time limiting waste and inefficiencies. Now, since operational excellence involves increasing the value created by your organization, it stands to reason that we must clearly define what value is and then how value is created. Now, every organization provides value to its customers. This is the basic makeup of our economic system. Uh, someone, a customer, desires a good or a service and is willing to pay someone else, and let's say your organization or your business, to provide that good or service to them. In theory, this is a transaction where both the customer and the provider are satisfied. The customer is exchanging money for value in the form of goods and or services, and the provider produces that value in exchange for the money. Now, in this model, we can identify value as being the goods and or the services that your customers are willing to pay for. Now that we know what value is, we need to ask the question, how do you create value within your organizations? And this is a key question because we've already established that operational excellence involves maximizing the value that you provide to your customers while at the same time limiting waste and inefficiency. So how do you provide value? And the answer is through various business processes. In other words, the work that organizational employees do day in and day out to transform inputs into goods or services that customers are willing to pay for. And as you can see in this image, processes are the means by which organizations deliver value to their customers. Now, with value clearly defined, we can, I believe, draw a straight line between operational excellence and process optimization. To increase value, a business must optimize the processes that produce that particular value. Now, with this understanding, what we see is that operational excellence really is impossible apart from process optimization. Now, at this point, another key question emerges that we need to answer. And that question is this, is it possible to optimize a process that you do not understand? 
Now, of course, logic is going to tell us that the answer to that question is no. But in addition to the logical answer to the question, I'd like to introduce a couple of quotes from business optimization experts to help us out. And as you can see here, famous industrial engineer W. Edwards Deming states that if you cannot define what you do as a process, then you actually do not know what it is that you do. Deming is saying here that simply defining what you provide to your customers in the form of those finished goods or services, being able to describe that output, that doesn't mean that you actually understand how that output is produced. And what he's saying is that understanding how outputs are produced is a prerequisite to optimizing those outputs. So achieving operational excellence requires that we know how the goods or services that we provide are produced. In other words, we must know and understand our business processes intellectually. But is that intellectual understanding of a process, is that enough to improve the process? More specifically, can we improve a process that we can't see? Now, to help answer this second question, I want to share a quote from the book, Lean Thinking. And in this book, the authors state that if the activities required to deliver value cannot be precisely identified, analyzed, and linked together, then they cannot be challenged, improved, and eventually perfected. Now, if you look at the first line of this quote, the activities required to deliver value, that essentially is the definition of a process. Processes are activities performed in a particular sequence that result in an output. And now the authors here are positing that if processes cannot be identified and linked together, then there's no way to optimize them. In other words, operational excellence is not only an impossibility apart from a clear intellectual understanding of your processes, but it's also impossible apart from clear documentation of those processes. After all, if a process exists only in my head, it can't be examined by other people. They can't challenge the current state. They can't give me ideas or feedback to help make it better. In order for them to do this, the process has to be visualized. So in summary, if we're going to achieve operational excellence, then we need to optimize our processes. And if we're going to optimize our processes, then we need to, one, understand them intellectually, and two, document them visually. And this leads to yet another question. How can we as a business go about understanding our processes, visualizing them, and optimizing them? And I'd like to submit to you that by building process management as a discipline into your business, you can create a foundation for achieving operational excellence. And to begin fleshing this out a bit further, let's first define what I mean by process management. And process management is the practice of improving company performance through managing and optimizing business processes. Now, here we see that word again, optimizing. But notice that it's coupled with another action verb, managing. And so we can see that process management involves not only optimizing business processes, but also managing them. In other words, governing them and keeping them relevant and up to date. And this definition of process management, I believe, clarifies for us the path to operational excellence. Businesses who desire to provide better value while limiting waste and inefficiencies must begin to optimize the way that they produce value. And that would be through their business processes. In order to optimize their business processes, organizations first need to document and manage them consistently. Documentation and management then open the door for process optimization, which is the path to operational excellence. In other words, a state of perpetual process improvement. Now, at this point in the session, I'd like to take a quick detour for a moment and focus on some various process optimization tactics that are available to businesses that have established clear process documentation and have instituted active process management. Now, there are various tactics that are available in the optimization toolbox. And the one that many companies, especially in our digital age, jump to right away 
is the fifth one on this list, and that would be automation. However, organizations should be wary of the dangers of automating a poorly designed process. If we jumped right into automation, sure, we might be producing certain outputs faster, but faster does not necessarily equal better. If we automate a poorly designed process, we might end up creating more defects faster, or maybe we end up creating more inventory faster, and we end up not having any means to manage that inventory. Now, in most cases, you're going to have the opportunity to apply one or more of these preceding optimization tactics before you begin automating a process. So what I'd like to do is take a quick look at each one of these in a little bit more detail. First, eliminate. Is the process even necessary? Uh, are we fulfilling any specific internal or external customer demands? And for many internal processes, specifically certain types of reporting, this question should be explored before doing any documentation. Uh, is the data generated by this reporting, is it used to make business critical decisions? Does this process generate data that is redundant within the business? If so, the process might be a candidate for elimination and not for documentation, management, or optimization. And really, there's no easier way to decrease waste and inefficiencies than by eliminating entirely unnecessary processes from the value chain. Secondly, once we have verified that the process is a necessary one, we'll want to explore combining multiple steps into one. And this is common in office processes when a single person touches a piece of information multiple times and at different stages of the process. Can these multiple touches be combined into a single step? If so, we've eliminated unnecessary handoffs and reduced the opportunity for mistakes and defects. Third, rearrange. Will the process flow more efficiently if we change the order of the steps or if we changed who was responsible for performing the steps? This is a tactic that helps us confirm that the process is being performed at the right time and with the right resources. Fourthly, how can we simplify the process? Now this should not be confused with the elimination tactic, but instead refers to simplifying the task level detail of the required steps of the process. As a process flows from step to step, can any of the requirements within each of those steps be simplified and thus completed faster? Imagine, for example, a step that requires a person to gather project data from multiple individuals within the business. And currently, that data is gathered through email, and it happens on an ad hoc basis as the organizer makes requests. Now, in this case, we may be able to create a shareable digital template that will allow us to collect the data from those individuals and bypass the ad hoc request entirely. And this would be an example of simplifying that data gathering process, and it would result in more organized process information. Fifth and finally, automate. Once we've documented the process and optimized the, the flow of the process using tactics one through four, we're now ready to see if the process or parts of the process can be completed faster and more accurately using workflow automation to replace human actions. Now, since automation will most likely require the purchase of a new technology, it's critical that the return on investment be known before making that purchase. Now, this again is where good process documentation is helpful. With clear current state time and cost metrics built into the process design, you can make a responsible decision as to whether the benefits of automation are worth the investment. Well, in summary, operational excellence really is about the perpetual state of improvement. It's about applying all of these optimization tactics to your business processes consistently. But how do we get there? How do we get to that place where we can begin to apply those tactics consistently to that perpetual state of process improvement? Well, getting there requires a system of process documentation and management that promotes process improvement. And the basic components of this type of process management system are a comprehensive organizational process framework, uh, 
a methodology of process governance and a synergistic process platform. What we're going to do next is take a look at each of these components in more detail, starting with a process framework. Now, a framework is used to identify and organize all of the key processes performed within a business. The processes are grouped hierarchically and they show relationships between one another. Now, many organizations choose to create their process framework from scratch, while other organizations choose to leverage a pre-built framework. And if you're looking for a good pre-built framework option, I recommend checking out APQC's cross-industry process classification framework. That's a great free choice. And you can just go to apqc.org and download that framework. And what I want to do now is give you an idea of what a potential process framework using APQC's example might look like for a business. And the way that APQC organizes work information in their framework, uh, it starts at a very high level and it decomposes down to a very granular level of detail. The first level of detail is called a category. Uh, categories are intended to capture the high level flow of value creation within a business. Those are referred to as core processes. Below core processes are any management or supporting processes. Now, each of these categories can be expanded and we can drill into them. So for example, if we open up category two, develop and manage products and services, what we're going to see is a set of groups. So we have three process groups that exist within the governing category. Now, these process groups define at a high level how a particular end-to-end -end process is completed. And what we can do here is decompose these groups into processes. So if I were to open up one of these level two groups, what I'm going to see is a set of level three processes. And what we have here is a representation of the four processes that uh, combine to make up that develop and product, uh, excuse me, develop products and services group. So when we open that group up, we have four processes that define that end to end flow. But we have a couple of other layers to get to. So if we were to open up one of these processes, uh, perhaps design products and services, what we see here is more detail, more granularity. We have a process that's made up of first and foremost, a high level flow of activities. These activities are referred to as level four detail. Each of these activities contain what is called level five detail, which is often referred to as tasks. And so a framework gives you the ability to capture category, group, process, activity, and task level detail, and to show relationships that make sense of how your business produces value for your customers. So a framework is essential for process management. Now, not only will a process framework give you that necessary organizational structure for your processes, it's also going to serve as a roadmap for process development and improvement. Now, regardless of how you develop the process framework, the important thing is that you have one. Your framework is going to establish that necessary home for all of the process level work you'll be doing. Now, the second component of a process management system is governance. Now, this is where individuals are assigned accountability for ongoing process maintenance, and oftentimes even the initial documentation of the process. Good process governance helps organizations keep their process content in step with changing business requirements. This means that processes are kept up to date for auditing or compliance purposes, but more importantly than that, line of business workers, they now have access to processes that are accurate and helpful to them. So imagine this scenario with me for a moment. You're in the middle of a busy workday. Uh, you're struggling to complete uh, the particular activities and requirements that are in front of you, and you're looking for that perfect resource to help you keep the process moving along. So you go to SharePoint or whatever your company intranet is, and you go to the search bar and you make a search looking for relevant process documentation. Now, somewhere on page five of the search results, you finally find a document that you think might hold the answer to your question. So you open the document, you look at it, 
And then you realize it's been 10 years since this document was updated and it's referencing systems that we stopped using five years ago. And dejected, you move on and you continue wasting precious time searching for information that should be readily available to you. Now, this type of scenario can be avoided when you, one, create good process documentation, but two, establish this system of governance to keep an eye on these processes, to keep them relevant and in step with the business. So it's a very important component. Now, uh, quickly, I want to uh, point out the fact that governance happens both at the group level. So when we talked about a framework being made up of categories and groups and processes, we're not talking about pro uh, governance simply at the process level, but also at the group level. Uh, and typically group process owners have responsibility for um, multiple processes at a single time, whereas at the process level, uh, we have individual uh, ownership and accountability here as well. So we want to blend ownership and governance, uh, not only at the process level, but at the group level as well. All right, the final component of a process management system is the technology. In other words, what process platform are you going to use? Now, many organizations choose to start their process management journey right here. They go out and they shop for the right technology. And I would strongly advise against this because the technology that you purchase, it should support your methodology for process organization and governance. And it shouldn't be the other way around. So if you buy your technology first, what you're going to find is that you've now backed yourself into a corner and your strategy for organizing a process framework and for governing your process information will largely be determined by the technology that you've just purchased. So you want to do those other things first and then move into that technology evaluation. Now, when you get into that evaluation, there are three high level elements that I would recommend you look for in a process management system. All of these elements are going to work synergistically with your established framework and governance strategy. And those components are simplicity, accessibility, and governance. Now, I wanna take a closer look at each of these components. First, your process management tool should be simple. Rapid comprehension of process information is key to adoption of process management at an organization. Any process management tool that you use should assist the process writer in organizing and presenting accurate process information in a simple and readable format. Now, at a minimum, this should include things like clear process activities, defined responsibilities, uh, notation of systems and tags, the attachment of relevant documents. This type of format is going to help end users engage with process content more consistently. And what we'll find is that both process performers and the teams that are focused on process improvement and optimization will now have a foundation for completing the work that's before them. So if you want to make sure that your process management tool helps drive process simplicity and not process complexity, you want to look for some of these components. Next, process information should be accessible. As requirements in the business change, and they will, the standard processes that support the business have to change as well. Now, traditionally, changes to processes are made infrequently uh, within organizations, and oftentimes they're made without anyone else knowing about them. And what that does is it leaves impacted stakeholders to clean up a mess when the process doesn't perform as it's designed to perform. And this poor communication, it can extend uh, beyond the teams who are doing the work to the teams who are managing some of the supporting components. So we talked about process optimization using automation, for example. Well, if your process in the business is changing and your automation teams that are managing those supporting components are not kept in the loop with those process changes, what happens is that automation component stops working and people are wondering, why is the process failing? And so what we need in a process management solution is making sure that timely changes to processes are communicated out to all of the impacted stakeholders, both those in the business doing the work 
and those supporting the business through optimization tactics such as automation. Finally, a good process management tool will help your organization govern your processes. Now, it's important to ensure that your process platform is designed to support your vision for process governance. For example, if you desire that your line of business employees get involved in managing processes, which is something that I would highly recommend since they're the ones that have the highest level of business knowledge, the technology that you select, it needs to be suitable to engage those types of persons and not act as a barrier to their involvement. And this is where a lot of organizations tend to get it wrong. They desire that the line of business take ownership of their processes, but yet they go out and they buy a complex process tool that's designed for a formally trained business analyst. Now, this misstep of combining the right process governance strategy, one focused on line of uh, business process ownership, with the wrong process tool, something that's complex and designed for a business analyst, well, that can lead to frustration, disengagement, and ultimately what it's going to lead to is unreliable and irrelevant process documentation, which, as we've already discussed, is not an appropriate foundation for operational excellence. So in summary, to recap what we've talked about, operational excellence is at its core really about maximizing the value that you deliver to your customers, while at the same time limiting waste and inefficiencies. Organizations produce value by performing business processes. Therefore, achieving operational excellence means having your processes in a constant state of improvement, where you are applying all of those optimization tactics that we looked at, eliminate, combine, rearrange, simplify, and automate. Getting to that state requires clear, accurate, and governed process documentation within the structure of a process framework. And deploying the right process platform, it can help bring all of these components together by providing a simple to use interface, making process information accessible, and helping your process owners perform their governance responsibilities. Now, if you've not previously considered the discipline of process management as a potential pathway to operational excellence, I hope that, that the discussion today has encouraged you to take action or to potentially explore that possibility in more depth. And I appreciate your attention during the session today. Uh, feel free to uh, visit our website, www.nintex.com to learn how we might be able to help support your process management and automation efforts. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. This is Angela Gibson. My contact information is right there on the screen for you to contact us at Abraham's Consulting should you need us to demonstrate the solution specifically for your use case. Have a great day.